the meeting of the Deerfield Conservation Commission. It is December 28th, 2017, 7 p.m. Members present. Ben Byrne. Steve Barrett. Will we miss it? Brian Dana. All right, we have a, not a huge agenda in front of us, but uh, we do have some old business. We have a request for determination, Mass DOT for 75 Sunderland Road project to demolish and remove buildings and associated underground utilities near Sugarloaf Brook and replace with a salt brine plant building. We continued this meeting from the last time because there were a number of questions that you are going to, I hope, answer for us. Good to see you again. Thanks for having me. I'm uh, Robert Terrier from SDOT. Yep. Good seeing you. Uh, so you had some questions last time and I could not answer them. Uh, but I do have some additional information for you about the tanks and about the protection of the tanks. I have a couple copies. Got some information here. Got three copies of this. Uh, so I'll, I'll start off with the tanks first. Uh, just to recap, so we're proposing a new building in the riverfront and uh, the tank, we'll call it a tank farm. It's just on the 200 foot riverfront out. Uh, so we're tearing down some buldings, uh, putting a new building in for the proposal of the mm -hmm. RDA. Uh, so the, you have questions about the tanks. I didn't know a lot of details about the tanks. Uh, didn't know much. So I talked with uh, several people about it. And uh, first we'll start with the tanks. The tank proposed are up to six tanks. There's Six to ten thousand gallons each. They're meant to hold water, but also what would be used uh, in the tank would be the salt that's on the premises would be mixed in the tanks and they would make a wine solution out of it. It's used on the roadways and the highways. The tanks that they're proposing are called cross linked polyethylene tanks. And I just printed this out as an example from one of the uh, companies that manufactures the tanks why the tanks are better than you know, your standard you know, steel, stainless steel, things like that. It's just one, uh, one example from one of the companies. I didn't know much about it myself. Um, I think the biggest question was spill control, if there is a, even concern with spill with that fluid. Right. <coughs> uh, I talked with several people about that, about the spills. Um, we talked about a few different things. With, uh, one being, there's not going to be the ability for trucks and heavy equipment to enter into that tank farm. There's ballers there, there's a concrete raised concrete pad. Um, those tanks too aren't really um, something that are going to be storing, they're not storing hazardous materials and they're they're meant to be used and mix the brine as it's being used. So it's, it's not going to be something in the summer you're going to have six tanks full of brine solution there. Uh, they make it, they use it, they drain the tank, they move on. Um, a couple so of these are not storage tanks per se. They're not. They're meant mixing for tanks that you're going to mix up 6,000 gallons of water and salt loaded onto X number of trucks. And then the tank is sitting there empty. Right. Right. So they're really yeah. they're not storage tanks. They just it's almost like a manufacturing process. In in by nine, out by five. Right. As to, yeah, they're not storage as compared to like heating oil tank. Yeah. You could do, do short term storage. So there's a possibility you know, liquid prepping for a storm perhaps. Yeah. But a couple of the things too I wanted to note that people brought up too is that the concrete pad itself is going to be pitched away. You have the building in the front, you have the concrete pad which is raised, which the uh, tanks are going to be on, which is pitched away from the building. And the toilet <coughs> too was also such that if there were, if it was, say, catastrophic, I don't know, plane crack, something like that, and they were all full fluid and brine or water is going to flow this way with your resource areas. The one I talked to wanted to change anything, uh, had any concerns about it. All the engineers involved, there's architect, there's mechanical engineers, building engineers, and of course the people who are going to use the depot. 
no one really had any, any concerns with it. They were make changes. Uh, they were open to making changes as we discussed them. Uh, I couldn't really find anything really brought up a concern from somebody. Everybody did know, you know, they're going to go through the building inspector's office, maybe even state inspectors, any fire, local fire inspectors, electrical inspectors, are all going to be checking those, all the different connections and things like that. Um, I really couldn't come up with a concern, you know, for still into research areas, anything like that. Um, there's enough information for you. I'm going to take a quick look at the plans here. Yeah. And this whole area has already been developed, as I remember. Yes, yeah, yeah. with the small sheds that are in here after yeah. taking out, broken up remnants of asphalt pavement and something out there. How are you guys getting new gas service? You already have existing gas service there? That's what I assumed. Um, we new talked about sewer and gas, that they must already have gas there because that's how they're going to use the keep the building. But there must be some type of that says they are. gas already. To, to connect new to gas To existing, to local. Okay. Maybe. Connect new gas service uh, to existing. So it'll building. be. Yeah, there's, there's something there to pull on that too. So we just uh, Yeah, I just looked at this one, which is new gas service by local gas company. Somebody knows somebody. <laughs> Like I said, I think that was our only concern is, was there any catch hazards or if it even was a hazard to be caught? I think if it did what kind of tanks they were. Or yeah, any of that. and I think that basically, Brian, were you at? Yeah, I think with, yeah. with, it, with it not being a holding tank, but more of a mixing and then pumped into a truck and then put down, and you're going to put it down on the roadways anyways. Yeah. <laughs> That's the thing. Yeah, so it's not considered this. Yeah. It is being put down on the highways. And these this is pre pre treatment? Pre treatment or areas where, you know, uh, it's basically an effort to reduce the amount of salt that goes on. So it's kind of like temperatures are there, conditions are there, so they can use the liquid form to try to do that. Uh, I think it's an up and coming thing that can be doing more and more of. So it's not as bad as the salt itself. Right. With that lower like lesser yeah, yeah. Less, yeah, less 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 situation. There's no other tanks on that tank farm. That's one thing I can tell you clearly too. There's no storage tanks of you know, hazardous oils, gas, and like that. It's all for the brine. So that's and they're doing away with the old one then. I would take it. There's a tank over it. Yeah, that tank. Yeah, but it's there's a you know, same thing, poly well here. Mm -hmm. I think they have a special mix at some locations. It's a little slightly different from that. Yeah. Certain locations. I'm not sure if they're going to do away with that or not. But that's over by the gas pump, so. <laughs> yeah, now that they have this, possibly it would. Um, I learned a lot about it. it was, I found it very interesting. I, I could, but I couldn't answer you last time. I, I, was, I wasn't about to uh, make it up on the yeah. fly. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. You know.
All right, guys, what, do, what is our pleasure? I think we have enough info there. It is being pitched. Yeah, I think it's, it, it's going to have water. And, and it's into the whole parking area. It's coming area back anyways, into this yeah. area. It's already been developed. <coughs> do we want to look at a negative determination? Just that corner of the, the 200 That's foot. 200 foot. Yeah, this one. Gonna have this little, little building. Yeah, just part of a tank. Yeah. Well, we could go with the, the classic number three, the work no. described. Hmm? No. All Here's right. Recommendation right for the, but negative. Don't forget there are five different negative determinations. Read number three and see what it says. I can't hear what you're saying. Read number three and see what it says. And then compare it to number two. The work is going. Number three is the work is in the buffer zone and will not alter, which is not the case here. Yeah. Negative two is the work is in the resource area and will not alter which does appear to be the case here, right? We could go with the number two. Yeah, because we're in the yeah 200, but outside the 100 foot. Well, it doesn't matter. You're in the 200 foot riverfront. So if I may, you know, you're going degraded over degraded. So mm -hmm. it's kind of a wash. You're not actually altering. You're in a resource area, but you're not altering it, really, because you already have, everything's degraded there already. So that's why, I, if you did a negative three, you'd be calling the resource area a buffer zone, which you don't want to do. That's true. So you're in riverfront, so you need to address it as a resource area, and the only one, if you're doing a negative, the only one that applies is negative two. That's why we have him here, I suppose. <laughs> That's why he gets paid That's and we don't. That's why he's getting paid and we don't. <laughs> <laughs> All right, I'm going to make a motion that we Give them a negative two, as per Mr. Stinson. No, second. Aye. 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 Just a nod. I said aye. <laughs> Thank you, Mark. You're welcome, sir. These plans for us? Oh, we can. Are they in the same side? Okay. Same. All right. Nope. Thank you. One, she'll get them out. Okay. I can't guarantee when, but she'll get them right. out. Can I steal that agenda then? Magician. Thank you, sir. <laughs> All right. Thank you. We also have, yes, yes. thank you for coming in. See you, Rob. We have front of us uh, under old business the request for a certificate of compliance for the solar project at 901 River Road and Ryan Joyce is here to address any questions now just as a matter of information 
when this came before us, I sent it out to everybody with idea. Does anybody have any comments? And I did receive two comments, and one was from Brian, and it basically, if I can find it, well, he had some questions. I'll, I will defer to you, Brian. Oh, it was about either pulling off to spring to see how it does to the winter because we've had some issues there of erosion throughout the project. I think that was the general use of that. Oh, here it is. This is Brian's comment. I think so. This project seems to have been an ongoing issue. I would think we could even wait until spring and see how it fares. Seeing it. <coughs> so basically, and then Louis sent a comment that basically he had reviewed things and <coughs> um, he and I had done a site visit back in what, October? I didn't go and we had been up there and um, neither, I mean, I, I didn't have any issues with the finished product. I know what you're saying because they did have a long, and it seems sometimes that we had to threaten them with him. <laughs> <laughs> and But they seem to have come around on every issue. But I think it's important that if any of us have these questions that you can come up here if you'd like and address the issues of, of erosion controls in the past and where we stand today. Can I ask a question first? Sure. Did they submit a form 8A, request for certificate of compliance? We have a WPA form 8A, request for certificate of compliance. Is there an affidavit statement with it? Because if we look at the top of the page, if I may. We do. We have a. Oh, okay. For as long as you have that. I just want to make sure. We have a letter dated December 15th from Kevin McCaffrey. And now Louis has looked at this. He's a, he's a registered uh, engineer. engineer. So if you right. want to take That's a look at that, Brian. Is, right. not be an engineer, could be a weapons person. Somebody right, but is, he's a registered engineer. Right. Yeah, which, I remember from yeah. yeah. And we'll pass it down to you when Brian's done. And that's what we usually try to do is get, you know, make sure the plans have a stamp or... Yes, absolutely. I just wanted to make sure you guys got that. Okay. Yeah. So what drives you down here tonight? I needed, I needed the hours. <laughs> I needed a meeting to go to. This is on live TV, you understand that, don't understand. you? <laughs> I'm just showing the taxpayers they're getting their money's worth. And we thank you. You're welcome. There again, there it is, Lou. We're here from the government, and we're here to help you. But it's true in my case. You know it. You've, been, yes. you've, you've, you've done good work for the town of Deerfield. We can't really complain about you. <laughs> <laughs> it was an open-ended. Yes. <laughs> Very well put. Thank you, Lou. any further. No, it's already out there. <laughs> what do you think, Brian? It's something that they're adjusting. I didn't, I wasn't at the last sale, so I really saw it. So I just wanted to make sure that you know, it was not going to Yeah, oh yeah, it was definitely some problems there. We weren't necessarily getting answers or fixes that. There were times, and it was like pulling teeth. I would agree with you. Can I ask a question? I can't remember. What, is there a stormwater basin, detention basin, anything like that in the in jurisdiction? Yes. So there should be an ongoing condition for maintenance yes. of the basin? Yes. Okay. That was see. all part of the order, the original. Good. So you'll, when you write the certificate of compliance up, you'll just have to get ongoing conditions for maintenance of the system. Don't forget there's a requirement for a logbook. Yes. Okay. Good. Yeah, I believe it's condition 19, and those are ongoing. Um, okay. There's an entity involved that's going to basically maintain this, this system and this site 
Awesome. And they plan to, it's in their best interest to, to do all these different things, to maintain the patient's heart functions, to address any internal issues that you know, may come about. Um, you know, the CSC request is really about the construction um, uh, that went on you know, for the, during 2016. Um, they, they did some repairs you know, earlier this year, and that, that was about April. You know, we've had you know, this entire growing season. Late October, on the site, um, and you know here we are. So that's the very short story on this one. I apologize, my voice is shot. I'm trying not to, to talk too much. I'll uh, be happy to address any questions. All right. Thank you very much, Ryan. Um, we're all good to go. I'm going to make a motion that we. Sign off on the certificate of compliance. We'll second it. For file 1420202. Aye. 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 Can I come up a second and look at the form with you? Sure. So you're going to issue a complete, but also ongoing conditions so you're going to check that off as well and put like you stated general condition 19 and that's an ongoing condition that's the maintenance part. that's the maintenance for the storm log yes. and that includes the logs so. yeah so i don't know if you had any special condition you guys typically don't no so you're all set now so complete and ongoing it's good to have him here no. Even if he is just, it's like a lawyer with billable hours. <laughs> All right, we're good. Because we'll look at these out next week. Okay. Maybe tomorrow, but I'm thinking more next okay. week. So thanks for coming in. Appreciate it. Thank you very much. front of us an RDA for well, this Where is it? Actually what they did Brian they attached every single report as part of their request for the certificate of compliance every picture for the entire project. It's nice and thorough. I like that. Was that? Nice and thorough. I like that. We try. <laughs> I think they've done a few. <laughs> <laughs> so we have a request, an RDA in front of us, submitted by the Veterinary Emergency and Specialty Hospital over on 5010 <clears throat> for an addition to their building. I don't know if I got two of these. No. So basically. This is their existing building and parking area. They want to put this small I have a couple six pictures too. Ah, that's, I was wondering where that was. A Sixteen foot by forty-seven foot single floor addition to the existing building on the side facing out towards the road. The same picture? Yes. Yeah. So right about here. Then this they're going to move this walkway out. North up here. That's yeah. Uh, That's no, it's five a, it's and ten. a bench and just oh. for people to sit while they're waiting. So basically this is just a, like a sitting area. Mm -hmm. 16. Yeah, just the walkway. About here. Uh, and this walkway here. will come out so further. Just move it. There is this big detention basin here. And there was a question that Mark has that we, the applicant is not, wasn't able to be here this evening. Um, as to 
is this field still being found? It looks like it is. It looks, I mean, if you look at, it does look certainly. Yeah. So that's by, you know, farmers are still allowed to plow, or to mow, even if that's a wetland. Mm -hmm. So my question is, she's showing, they're showing, showing the wetland line. Here's the wetlands, it's probably a hundred foot. This is a hundred foot, yeah. So I don't know what that's, because we don't have the other half of this. They're showing the wetland line here, south of yeah, the I would basin. Think, yeah, right, this blue line, I'm guessing. That this looks is a hundred foot wetland buffer. It's running through the, from okay. From here, which might be from here. But that, I would suspect, also is a wetland. But if it's in a farmer's field and it's being But hay, still a wetland. Yeah. Regardless. But if this is the work area, I measured it. I think 100 feet was right to the edge of the building. So it you is. guys would just be approving. Where's the RDA? She's asking for work. So well, the work depicted in the plans here. So basically, what it means is, as we talked about before, is, is it a negative two, negative three, negative four? A negative three means the work is in the buffer and will not alter. Negative four means all the work is outside jurisdiction. So in this case, it's clear from that that's still a weather line that the work is outside jurisdiction, which means, you know, you have to decide whether or not it's in the buffer or whether or not it's totally outside jurisdiction, meaning do you wish you were negative three or negative four? The answer is no. It's your call. But I did measure. For years, I've counted on you to just tell me, tell us what to do. <laughs> I can't. For God's sakes, man. If that's, if that's 100 foot right there, then it's all outside jurisdiction, meaning you'd issue a negative four. If you think it might be in the 100 foot, then you'd have to issue a negative three that the work is in the buffer and will not alter. And the answer is, I don't know. Yes. Well, if this is the 100 foot buffer, this line here, right. they're showing. They're not doing anything. No. Inside. They're not doing here. Anything. No. No work. This is the only work here. Yep. Sorry. So if the wetlands are closer, because I think the wetlands are closer from in the field somewhere, that would be. I think it's still, right you know, outside 100 feet, in my opinion. Only without having been on the site. Well, we have three been. and four. What is. I mean, well, it's still is, a negative. Well, it's still, it's a huge difference. Because a, addition, right? a negative three means you have jurisdiction over the work if it's in the buffer zone. Yeah. Negative four means it's outside jurisdiction, meaning you can't do anything. You have no jurisdiction. So that's the big distinction. So... I'll just read number three. The work described in the request is within the buffer zone as defined in the regulations, but will not alter an area subject to protection under the Act. Therefore, said work does not require the filing of a notice of intent subject to the following conditions, if any. Number four is the work described in the request is not within an area subject to protection under the Act, including the buffer zone. Therefore, said work does not require the filing of a notice of intent unless and until said work alters an area subject to protection under the Act. So three, you can set conditions. Four, you can't do we anything just walk except away to it. say it's, it's outside our jurisdiction. And the answer is, I don't know. I think, myself, so, because, you know, we're not sure exactly on the wetlands because of the snow and stuff, and, a negative number three, we can say put the sil siltation protection down. If you think the work is in, in the buffer, then yes, you can set those conditions, that condition. Did you use your computer to, on the Yeah, but I didn't spend much time really on measurement. <coughs> I didn't. It was, it was just before I turned my computer off and, and Came up here. Oh, that's, that was original. Yeah, original plan. We have a scale. We don't have a scale. So that's got to be the same plan 
is the original notice of intent, I'm assuming mm -hmm. the wetland line. But again, I don't know if the wetland line on the west side is talking about that stream, that swale right. ditch, yeah. Whatever, yeah. or if it's talking right. about wetlands in that agricultural field. I just don't know. Well, do you want to go with the number three with the condition that they come when, I assume they're going to do this come springtime. Being that it's so gray would probably be on the safer side. That yeah, and that way it also keeps anything from getting into this detention basin, if in fact it, it did slope down that way. Yeah. So I think that would give them the ability to do what they want to do and give us the ability to make sure that yeah, there's some any, any resource yeah. areas that we have are protected. <coughs> So why don't we, if that works for everybody, go with the number three that the siltation controls are installed before construction begins. Yeah. That work for everyone? Yep. Yeah. Yes. I shall so move. I'll second. Aye. 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 So anytime you guys need aerial photos, uh, I'll be glad to measure something, work something out, whatever you guys need, just let me know. There's a website you can get on online too, isn't there? Uh, yeah, there is My Community or Oliver. I don't know if you ever used Oliver. It's a free mass.gov GIS program. I think I'm going to Oliver? <coughs> Oliver. Is that something new or? No, it's been there for years. Has it? Yeah. I think I got into it getting on, uh, we're like surveying our place up on Federal Street, and I happened to stumble across it and found That's all kinds of layers and stuff. Cool. No. <coughs> I mean, my program cost a couple thousand dollars. If you, if you can do more than Oliver, but Oliver is a great free program. Yeah. 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 So I'm sorry. Never heard of it. You mean working down a highway garage there? Never heard of that one. Yeah. You know, all the others that we had yeah. in the Mass DOT. Well, that's because I, I asked Rob. He has the same program I do, yeah. which is Arcanop. <coughs> right, right. That's the that's word. what I use. But you know, don't forget that's all individual. That's all licenses. So a lot right, of right. State agencies don't have the license for it, so they use Oliver too. Oh, okay. Oliver as well. Arcanop, Arc GIS. Yeah, yeah. That's what we yeah. we had some of that. Yeah, yeah. I never heard of the Oliver. That's the mess Yeah. All right, so you guys going to have a party tonight? <laughs> We're going to have a, 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 we'll go to the club. <laughs> Just, nah, never mind. Okay. Club Nyquil? <laughs> Thanks. All right, you guys did a nice job. All right, um, so let's review the mail. Advance notice, MAC dues amount for fiscal night 2019, payable by September 30th, 2018. I'm not going to worry about that too much. And this is a summary expenses. Oh, can I go back to the MACC thing? Yeah, sure. MACC has a new director. And I've talked to her on the phone a couple of times, swapped some emails with her. She actually wants to come out and visit some commissions out here, maybe do a meet and greet kind of thing. So it might be a hundred people. What's the most you guys have ever had in here? I just think I mean, you guys have a very central location here. So I wonder if you're we'll interested. Maybe when uh, Mark White was building that uh, off of 116, that was pretty crowded. I mean, certainly if you guys are interested in hosting it, if we, you know, I'm looking in Springfield, Westfield, Deerfield, just because you guys have this nice, great room, centrally located. So I'm just wondering if you're interested. I think it would be something we'd have to run by the select board, or at oh, least the town manager. Oh, understood. Because oh, understood. obviously, municipal building, we're really. But I want to start with you and then uh, go to the town administrator or the board of selectmen. Yeah, talk to so. Wendy and find out uh, okay. if the board of selectmen would be on board for that. Because yeah. she is interested. She sounds very. Uh, just she wants to communicate better with especially the conservation commissions out here in the West. You know, because so often we do get 
looked over, glanced over. Where? Where? Yeah. Yeah, the guy I talked to at the Attorney General's office today says, so you're from Fifefield. What? Fifefield? Is there such a town in Massachusetts? I've never heard of it. <laughs> never heard of it. I said, no, Deerfield. Wow. So, this is just saying that uh, how much money we've expended and what we have available still in our budget. So I'll let you know if I hear anything more and then I'll, I'll talk to you, Steve. Okay, sounds good, Mark. So we had a budget of $800, we've expended $368.43, and as of right now, we have a balance available of $431.57. That would be the mail. That's it. That's it. Now we'll do the minutes. Okay, I'm going to go. Okay, thanks again for coming in, Mark. Appreciate your help. Guys. Nice job, nice job. Well, thanks. Appreciate it. We only Good have night. one copy of the minutes, so yeah. Who didn't? All right, you were here, so. No other business. Um no other business that would be reasonably known about forty eight hours, so no. That's an NA. the mail. Check your calendar for the next. <laughs> You're welcome. <laughs> <coughs> you don't have your phone out? No. My phone is sitting in, actually it's in my pocket. I am actually have it with me because it lies the whole thing. I mean, I, actually, having Mark here is actually not a bad thing. No. He's, um, he's pretty good, and he's been good for for the town of Deerfield. He's helped us out a lot, a bunch of different projects. Although now that he's gone, we could probably say rotten things about him too. So. <laughs> he's gone. <laughs> Damn it. Second. Aye. 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 Done. And uh, next meeting would be on January 25th. If that works for everybody. Fourth Thursday of the month. I won't be able to make it till next year. Next year, that's right. So basically at this point, I'll make a motion to adjourn. Unless there's anything else that we need to discuss. Second. Aye. Aye. Second. Aye. We're out.